now we will understand how human act as both definitive and the intermediate host for tinea solium infection so for understanding that we have to first know what are the infections caused by the tinea solium what are the infections caused by the tinea solium so tinea solium causes two types of infection one is the gi infections and the other one is the cysticercosis cysticercosis okay the gi infections and the cysticercosis these gi infections are caused by the larva of the tinea solium these are caused by the larva of the tinea solium so in case of gi infection the infective form is the larva of the tinea solium and what is the name of that larva the name of that larva is cysticercus cellulosi the name of that larva is cysticercus cellulosi while the cystisir in case of cysticercosis the infective form is the egg of the tinea solium so in case of cysticercosis disease the infective form is the egg of the tinea solium so for understanding the concept behind why human is acting as both definitive and the intermediate host for the tinea, uh, tinea solium infection we have to first uh, understand the pathogenesis or the life cycle of the tinea solium in case of gi infection because the life cycle of the tinea solium in gi infection and in cysticercosis infection varies a lot okay so first we will understand the life cycle of the tinea solium in case of gi infections okay and then we will go to the life cycle in the cysticercosis infection and then we will fuse both of them and we'll understand how human is acting as definitive and the intermediate host so in case of the gi infection in case of the gi infection the mode of infection or the uh, mode of infection is of course fico oral route and the infective form is the cc larva of the cystinia solium and from where the larva enters into the human it is the pork so suppose suppose this is the this is the pork okay this is the pork and this is the larva cysticercus cellulosi larva and this larva is ingested by a human this larva or in the form of pork or of course pork is eaten by the human so when the human eats the pork the larva enters into the human body and in the human body in the intestine of the human body this is the intestine of the human body the larva has entered here larva has entered here now this larva gets converted into this gets converted into its adult form okay this is the adult form of that larva so this gets converted into adult form and now this adult form releases now this uh, adult form releases the eggs these are the eggs of the tinea solium so this is adult worm adult worm adult worm releases the eggs and this eggs is released into the these eggs are released into the feces okay these eggs are released into the feces this is the feces in the feces the eggs are released and when this feces is taken by a pig suppose this is a pig this is a pig and when this uh, feces entering into the uh, when this feces is in uh, i mean ingested by the uh, ingested by the pig then the uh, when the feces, uh, feces is ingested by the pig then the eggs uh, hatch out in the intestine of that pig and the eggs will release the the eggs will cause the uh, you know the eggs will cause the release the hexacanth embryo of the tinea solium okay and that hexacanth embryo will penetrate the intestine of the pig so suppose this is the intestine of the pig this is the intestine of the pig and the hexacanth embryo has reached here this hexacanth embryo penetrates the intestine this hexacanth embryo penetrates the intestine and enters into the portal circulation and this enters into the portal circulation so this has entered into the portal circulation and through the portal circulation it through the portal circulation this hexacanth embryo reaches to the skeletal muscles of the 
the skeletal muscles of the uh, the skeletal muscle of the pig and in the skeletal muscle of the pig it develops into the larva in this hexacanth embryo develops into larva okay so this has developed into larva and then this larva uh, containing pork when eaten uh, eaten by the man then this whole cycle continues okay so this is how the whole cycle occurs in case of the cysticercosis uh, sorry the tinea solium infection in the human the gi infection by the tinea solium this is the whole life cycle in case of gi infection in human by tinea solium now once you have understood this all now let's go to the infection by the uh, i mean the life cycle of the tinea solium in case of the cysticercosis so suppose this was that suppose this was this was the man who has taken the pork and has adult worms in his intestine so he is releasing the eggs in the feces he is releasing the eggs in his feces okay this is his feces and he is releasing the eggs in the feces this is the egg okay eggs of the tinea solium are released into the feces now when this feces is contaminating a food when suppose this uh, is contaminating food this is contaminating food this is contaminating the food and this food is taken by another human if this food is taken by another human then this this food is containing what this food is containing the eggs of the tinea solium na? so these eggs are also entering this human along with the food and in this human in the intestine of this human what happens in the intestine of this human what happens is that the eggs which have reached here the eggs which have reached here uh, this is the eggs sorry this is the eggs that has reached here and these eggs are what what these eggs are doing these are now penetrating the intestine of the human and after penetrating they are going to the portal circulation and through the portal circulation through the portal circulation they reach to the skeletal muscle of the human they reach to the skeletal muscle of the human there they were when they when the egg was entering into the intestine of the pig then it was going to the skeletal muscle of that pig but when it is in eggs are ingested by a human then these eggs are entering into the portal circulation and through the portal circulation they are reaching to the muscles uh, to the muscles or there may be different sides okay there are different sides like they may go to the muscle they may go to the uh, brain they may go to the brain they may go to the to the eyes they may go to the eyes also so different sides they may involve so the hexacanth embryo which has been released from that egg in the into the intestine of the human that has reached to the intestine that uh, hexacanth embryo has reached to the intestine it is penetrating the uh, intestinal wall and reaches to the portal circulation and through the portal circulation it is going to the either uh, muscles or to the brain or to the eyes at these sites it is going and when it reaches to these sites it develops into it develops into the adult it develops into the larvae form okay it develops into the larva suppose it has reached to the sorry suppose uh, suppose it has reached to the muscle it has reached to the muscle then it develops into the uh, larvae form in the muscle it has reached sub and if it has reached to the eye then in the eye suppose this is eye it develops into the larvae form in the eye it develops into larvae form in the eye if it has entered the brain then it will develop into the larvae form in the brain okay develop into larvae form in the brain so when it is involving the ear uh, sorry the eyes then it will be called as ocular cysticercosis when it is involving the skeletal muscle then it is will be called as muscular cysticercosis if it is involving the brain then it will be called as neurocysticercosis okay so this is the life cycle of the 
tinea solium in case of in case if it is causing cysticercosis so this is how the life cycle of the tinea solium varies in case of the uh, cysticercosis infection and in case of the gi infection in gi infection the cause it uh, the infection was coming from the the i mean the causative agent was the larva of the larva of the tinea solium okay it was starting from the pork of the uh, contaminated pork with and while in case of cysticercosis it is starting from the contaminated food with the egg of the tinea solium there it was con there in case of the gi infection the uh, contaminated food uh, sorry the in case of gi infection the starting point was the pork contaminated or containing the uh, larva of the tinea solium but in case of cysticercosis the starting point is the food contaminated with the eggs of the tinea solium so if you see this life cycle if you see this life cycle if you see this whole life cycle uh, in case of cysticercosis then you will find that then you will find that uh, uh, yeah then you will find that the definitive host is a human see here this is a human and life cycle has been occurring here so the definitive host is a human and the intermediate host was also a human the intermediate host is also a human so both definitive and intermediate host are human but in case of the gi infection the definitive host was human but the intermediate host was pig okay but the intermediate host was pig so here but in case of cysticercosis the intermediate host is human this is the intermediate host and this is the definitive host this is intermediate host and this is definitive host so in this way we can say that the human can act as both definitive and the intermediate host in case of tinea solium infection in case of cysticercosis infection by the tinea solium let's understand once again so first let me erase this all so this was the okay so this was the pork this was the pork containing the larva this was ingested by a human okay this was ingested by the human the human in the human the egg was uh, the embryo developed into or the larva developed into the adult form the larva developed into the adult form and this adult form released the eggs this adult form released the eggs and these eggs and these eggs when ingested by a pig this is a pig so when these are ingested by a pig in the intestine of the pig they develop into the i mean the these eggs hatch out and the embryo released the embryo penetrates the intestine of the pig and via blood via the blood circulation it reaches to the muscle of the pig it reaches to the it reaches to the uh, it reaches to the muscle of the pig this is the muscle of the pig it reaches to the muscle of the pig and in the muscle in the muscle it reaches to the muscle of the pig and in the muscle it develops into the larva and when this is ingested by human then this cycle continues this is the cycle in case of the gi infection by tinea solium this is the cycle in case of gi infection by tinea solium but when these eggs when these eggs these eggs when these eggs contaminate a food contaminate food of any person and this food is taken by a human this food is taken by a human then in the intestine of the human of that person these uh, foods i mean these the eggs uh, which are present in that food they hatch out and release the hexacanth embryo in the intestine of that person and those embryo penetrate the intestinal wall of that person and reach via blood via the via the blood they 
reach to the different sites in the body those embryo reach to the different sites of the body what are those different sites those sites may be the skeletal muscles maybe the maybe the skeletal muscle maybe the eyes or maybe the brain okay so it there reach to the different sites uh, that embryo reach to the different sites and develop into the and develop into eggs at different sites suppose if it is in the eggs or if it is in the muscle or if it is in the brain they develop into the larva there at respective sites so it muscles and in brain it develops into the the embryo develops into the egg so if the embryo develops into egg in the eye it will be called ocular cysticercosis and if it enters into the uh, if it enters into the eyes uh, sorry muscles it will be called as muscle cysticercosis if it has entered into the brain then it will be called as neurocysticercosis so this is how the whole cycle is the whole cycle is associated or you know uh, in association with each other this and this becomes the this becomes the uh, this becomes the cysticercosis cycle this becomes the cycle in cysticercosis this man here is acting as the intermediate host and this is acting as the definitive host in case of cysticercosis but in case of gi infection this man is acting as the definitive host but this pig is acting as the intermediate host in case of gi cycle but in case of cysticercosis cycle this man is acting as a def uh, intermediate host and this man is acting as definitive host so in life cycle of tinea solium uh, in cysticercosis disease both the definitive as well as the intermediate host the intermediate as well as the definitive hosts are human both are human okay so that's why we can say that human can act as both definitive and intermediate host for the tinea solium infections okay I hope you all have understood this concept behind the life cycle of the tinea solium. It is a little bit complicated, but of course, this is how it is supposed to be in medical field. That's all for today.